There are a few foundational considerations when thinking about deploying AI in a business setting. And one of the most important ones in adopting these tools, whether you're thinking Copilot or some other generative AI tool, is ensuring there's a good organizational understanding of its limitations. So in this video, I want to dig into what is probably the biggest limitation of generative AI technology, that it can just get stuff plain wrong. And whether you want to frame this as hallucination or lying AI or in some other way, if you want to use AI inside your business, there's lots of reasons you need to get your head around this issue. Stick with me as I will explain in fairly basic terms why these errors happen and what, as part of your AI adoption process, you should do about it. Before we dig in further, a quick introduction. My name is Nick DeCorsi. I'm the owner of Bright Ideas Agency, a digital transformation consulting company focused on the needs of smaller businesses. I'm also the author of Who's in the Copilot Seat, a guidebook for small and medium-sized business leaders on how to adopt AI technology. If you're interested in learning more about working with me or getting a copy of my book, there are links below where you can get more information. Microsoft's warnings around the potential of AI getting stuff wrong are pretty much everywhere Copilot for Microsoft 365 and their other Copilot technologies are. And this is one of the signs of how committed Microsoft is to having a responsible AI program. They have a whole website dedicated to this issue. A link to that is below. And they have six pillars on which their AI responsibility efforts stand. And while in some videos here, I've criticized some of Microsoft's decisions that in my opinion, appear more focused on AI revenue than AI responsibility. I have to say that in a crowded market where there's a lot of companies doing fairly dubious things with generative AI, there are few that genuinely seem more committed to weaving responsibility into their offering than Microsoft. But even with all this focus on responsible use, Microsoft has at times had a fairly rough ride in the reliability of its generative AI tools. Does anyone remember when Bing Chat became Sydney? But so too has every other AI vendor as a propensity for making stuff up is just baked in to how generative AI works. But because of the amazing potential for these tools to increase productivity and worker satisfaction, this wrongness is something we have to work out how to manage in different ways. If you look at a large language model like GPT-4, which Copilot works on, it's the result of years of building bigger and bigger language models trained on larger data sets. At this point, we can simply imagine GPT-4 as being trained on most of the internet. But when we think of training, it's easy to anthropomorphize what that means. We think about humans and their ability to learn stuff. And as I've mentioned in a previous video, perhaps even the concept of GPT-4's vast training, just making it a superbly well-read intelligence that knows pretty much anything. But in truly understanding what's going on, this humanizing of the process isn't that useful. As while I can't explain to you exactly how I know the things I know, I can understand well enough how it appears GPT-4 knows stuff to say definitively that I don't think it really knows anything in the way we traditionally think about human knowledge. The T in GPT stands for transformer, and this is the type of AI model that GPT-4 is. What is important to know about transformers is they offer an enhanced capability to recognize contextual patterns as might be needed to identify the types of relationships you might see between words in phrases or paragraphs of written text. You might consider this ability one of semantic understanding, where the meaning of a particular set of words or characters is entirely dictated by the context in which it appears. What do we mean by semantic understanding? Well, take the sentence, she looked at the bat. Which bat do we mean? If the full sentence was, she looked at the bat which had just been dropped on the field, the bat is quite different than if the full sentence was, she looked at the bat flying in the night sky. With a good understanding of English or an equivalent in other languages, this is really clear. But think of the complexity involved in a model like GPT-4 being able to get this nuanced difference. How does it do it? Well, it's not by truly understanding the language in the way you or I might. It does so by recognizing these contextual patterns. And this key to the amazing level of knowledge we perceive of generative AI is also foundationally the reason AI gets stuff wrong. Take a pattern like this one on screen. We can look at it and predict the next shape. 
But if the pattern keeps repeating and then suddenly the next shape isn't what we'd expect, then what this effectively represents is we don't have enough data to truly understand the pattern. Imagine a pattern that repeats over 500 shapes. We'd probably want to see at least a thousand to make a reasonable prediction. And even then, it would be no better than a guess. The way that companies like OpenAI have addressed this pattern recognition problem is just to feed the AI model more and more training data so they get to see more patterns. It's estimated that GPT-4's training dataset consisted of over 50 trillion characters of text, which for comparison means that for every one of English language Wikipedia's estimated 29 billion characters of text, GPT-4 was trained on about a page. This is an amazingly large amount of text. But the problem with just adding more and more of the data that's out there is that what humans have chosen to write about isn't equally distributed. There are common general knowledge topics that most of the content you can find agree with, and then there are niche or controversial topics where either there isn't much content at all, or the content that exists isn't particularly settled. Guess which types of topics GPT-4 is generally more reliable on providing responses on. If you're finding learning more about why generative AI can be wrong useful, it would be great if you'd give this video a like to help it get in front of more people. And if you're interested in seeing more like this, please subscribe to the channel. So generative AI models are essentially just really good language prediction machines. But based on the data digested to build their understanding of the patterns they use to make those predictions, they will sometimes get stuff wrong. There are other factors that play into the issue of AI reliability problems though, connected with how they process an output entirely differently to a human, and also entirely differently to other types of AI technology too. For example, the process of predicting language is not the same as applying common sense to an issue to reach an answer. Models like GPT-4 have a really limited ability to reason through their responses to ensure they make sense. There are prompt engineering approaches that help to get around this, like chain of thought prompting, but this is simply not a process that a language model was designed to carry out. But it's also important to recognise that there's another key difference between the way humans know stuff and the way an AI model does. A human may know a lot about French literature, for example, and may also be interested in computer science, but be aware that they're still learning that topic. If you ask them two questions about these two different topics, most humans will temper their responses within the context of their awareness of the limits or potential limits of what they know. But to GPT-4, its world is its dataset. It doesn't have aspiration to learn more about a particular topic or even awareness that such information exists, beyond basic rules it's given of knowing things like its data cutoff, for example. And outside of those rules, it will confidently give you an answer about a topic that it effectively knows nothing about. This combination of issues explains high profile AI supported fails, like when the delivery firm DPD had to discontinue their chatbot service as it could curse at customers or disparage the company. But also explains why you might have received some strange email responses from colleagues or found sections of your new product brochure that describe a service incorrectly. For the business setting, the issues of generative AI are particularly a risk. If I'm going on vacation and I want some advice on tourist sites to see in London, England, the mainstream generative AI tools out there will probably do a universally decent job of giving a response. This is a topic on which there's lots of data in the training and not much dispute. But most of us don't have jobs where this type of request is relevant most of the time. In business, I need specific information about a client, about a product, or about a project. And this is the type of really specific, highly niche information that the process of training generative AI really sucks at. Can it give me some generalized information on what a similar product costs from lots of sources, or just make something up? Sure. But it can't give me the specifics I need to do business. This is why such a big part of Copilot for Microsoft 365's technology offer isn't necessarily new AI. It isn't, it just uses the GPT-4 model, the same as ChatGPT, but a complex orchestration engine that seeks out the right contextual data from inside your emails, documents, or chats, and passes this to the AI model to help it give a good response. This is called grounding, and is one method to help get more accurate results from generative AI on specific topics that are outside of its training dataset. 
The same approach is used to include up to the minute web results. But while grounding does seem to help to make generative AI outputs more accurate and certainly more specific, it doesn't entirely eliminate the potential for inaccuracy. Hallucination may still happen, even with well-grounded requests. But so too will you run into issues such as context window limits, where your grounding data is just too much for the AI model to look over in one go, leading to things being missed. And while Microsoft's Copilot products do focus on promoting the potential for errors, they are really not so good at reporting their limitations in looking at the whole relevant data set that could be used for grounding. So this leaves businesses and their end users in a situation where they have a new tool that on one hand can lead to amazing benefits, but on the other hand may just be misleading them. How the heck do we deal with that? Before I answer that question, I want to share some more about how I can help you with your digital transformation and AI journey. Getting the best from Microsoft 365 or from AI tools like Copilot for Microsoft 365 requires gaining new knowledge, getting good advice, and having the right plan. With my company, Bright Ideas Agency, I offer a whole set of options to help you focused on achieving more with technology. Right now, you can sign up for my brand new live training, Get to Know Copilot for Microsoft 365 Extensibility, being run in June and July. And if you book by May 12th, you get an early booking discount. But I also have options for one-on-one -on -one coaching, group training and workshop facilitation, and strategic planning and implementation consulting services. I work with companies around the world who are interested in supercharging the benefits they get from their Microsoft investments. If you're interested in learning more, there are links below for these services. Or reach out for a chat using the contact form on my website. As a business owner or the person leading AI adoption, or even a new user using AI, knowing about these potential issues is step one, but building safeguards in your organization and your personal use to avoid them is quite another. One of the pillars of responsible AI is accountability. And this is the foundation you must build for your AI adoption to work within your organization. You need to ensure your team members and their supervisors are aware of how they are accountable for their interactions and use of AI. But you also need to create a situation where it's clear that your organization takes responsibility for your use of AI too. What does this look like? Being clear in where you use it, taking responsibility for errors and making them right, not blaming your customers or other stakeholders for relying on AI generated information you chose to give them, don't be like the people running New York's AI chatbot that spewed incorrect advice to residents and business owners, a service set up to give people information about New York's policies and laws, with a tiny disclaimer right at the bottom of the page telling you the answer may be incorrect. The fact is, you already probably have systems for accountability of what people create and share within your business. Ultimately, Copilot or other AI is just a tool that you're using to create in the same way you're using Outlook to send email. Whatever standards you would normally expect should apply to AI-generated content, but also recognition that extra checking might be necessary, in the same way you might check work done by a new or inexperienced employee before having it sent out to clients. The reality is we are very used to wrongness in business. Humans make mistakes all the time. The problem with AI is we misjudge what it's good at, this was shown by a recent report by Boston Consulting Group into using GPT-4 with their consultant's work. It boosted what they did, but they also trusted it too much for producing correct facts and figures. A big part of co-pilot adoption for your business should be education around the safe use of the technology. And the foundation for this is ensuring there's an understanding across your team on why AI outputs might not be safe. There are other factors here to consider outside of hallucination, including bias and explainability, but they mostly come back to the same understanding that because generative AI models don't know stuff in the human sense of knowing stuff, they could fall into mistakes based on misinterpretation or even harmful interpretation of their training or grounding data. We have to remember that most of us inherently understand that a child or a new employee will often make more mistakes on a given task than someone who has had a lot of training or experience. We don't generally have to explicitly lay out that reality as if it might be in dispute or misunderstood. We have all been children. We have all been new in a company or group. We have all tried a task for the first time. As humans, the process of learning is part of our shared experience. 
We already all have huge levels of experience and great skill sets for working alongside people who might be wrong because they just don't know the answer or how to get it. The challenge here is getting everyone in your organization to understand that those skills must also apply to their relationship with AI. The best bosses are able to get the best out of new or inexperienced employees to integrate them and collaborate with them in useful ways and to support them to get the right answers without making them feel there is suspicion around everything they do. They take the time to check work and to consider how to communicate feedback or future instructions in order to improve over time. These same skills, with just minor revision, are exactly the ones that will define great human pilots of AI co-pilots into the future. We all already know how to do this. We just have to ensure we have the right expectations of the AI tools we work with and keep practicing to get the best out of them. What's your approach to this in your organization? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching through to the end. I hope this video was useful to you. Until the next one, bye bye.